everybody, it's Rain. Today we have another dyeing video. This is 75% fine superwash merino wool and 25% nylon and it is superwash. We're going to be dyeing this in a low immersion style dye today. This was completely dry before I put it in. I just put it in some water. And this little dilution here is Fawn from Dharma. And it is a heavily diluted mixture of a 1% stock solution. I took about 20 or 30 milliliters of the 1% stock solution and mixed it in about 200 milliliters of water. And you're going to see me do that several times in this video. I didn't keep track of how much dye I used. This was just a one-off braid. It will be listed in the shop later today. Be sure to stick around till the end of the video to see a sneak peek of all the braids and the colorways going up in the shop later today. So I added some more foam here and there. I wanted like the cloudy colorway like I did in one of my other videos. I'll link it up in the eye if you're interested in seeing me spin that up. This is kind of what I was going for on this braid as well. So I just press that in to make sure that it penetrates nicely. I still wanted some white left throughout the braid because it gives it kind of that clouds and blue sky look to it. This is Sapphire Blue by Jacquard and it was heavily diluted as well. Fun little fact. Sapphire Blue by Jacquard and Baby Blue Eyes by Dharma are pretty much the same color. Like they are spot on. If you have one in your collection, you probably don't need the other. So there's some more fawn. And as you can see, I didn't take measurements. I just was pouring it around and, and doing what I thought would be best for this braid. So I added a little more sapphire. I just want to say that this colorway is going to become a staple in my shop. I have dyed about three braids so far in this kind of colorway and I still haven't perfected it yet. But I have been taking notes and I'm pretty close to getting it exactly the way I want it. Sometimes it takes a few tries for those perfect colorways. All right, and now the fun part. We're gonna take about, I think this was an eighth of a teaspoon of citric acid. And I'm gonna add that. This is actually a little Easter egg dyeing cup. And we're gonna add Teddy Bear Brown acid dye powder to that. And we are going to mix it up and see if we can get some sharp speckles on this braid of superwash fiber. Now one thing about mixing citric acid and acid dyes, they don't mix very well at all, at least while they're dry. It's hard to get them to have like an even mixture just by mixing it around, even shaking it, anything like that. And plus, be sure you're wearing a respirator. I will link up in the eye a video that talks about the one I use. It has a link in the description of that video if you're interested. Make sure you always wear a respirator if you have your acid dye powder out in powder form. So I'm just taking a tiny little speck, just like you see, and I'm just going to go over the top. Just tapping it with my finger over the top of the braid. And I just wanted to add like a little hint of dark brown to this. I'm not too entirely sure if this will show up in the finished yarn, but I just wanted to give it a shot to see how it would look and see how it would work if we could actually get sharp speckles on a superwash braid like this. Also, you can speckle with just the acid dye powder straight. That's usually what I do. But if you want really, really sharp speckles that pretty much set instantly as soon as they hit the fiber, then you definitely want to mix with citric acid. And as you can see, I pointed up there, I've got my heat on. So I waited until those set and it didn't take them very long, probably about five minutes to set completely so that they wouldn't move or smudge once I flipped it over. So I went ahead and flipped it over and we are going to speckle the other side. Speckling is definitely one of my favorite techniques to use in dyeing. I think a lot of it has to do with just the uncertainty of how it's gonna look and where the speckles are gonna go. 
and it makes a very unique look in the end and I just love it so I went ahead and checked that and once again I'm moving it around because it's super wash don't have to worry about felting you wouldn't want to move it if it was hot like this I unfortunately lost the footage of me washing this but I just went ahead and washed it uh, after it cooled off with ivory dish soap my favorite here is the finished fiber and here's how those speckles turned out this is what they look like on the dried fiber as you can see I can't wait to try this with some really fun pops of color later on in the future it's gonna be so fun so I'm gonna insert a few pictures here of how it looks with some kind of semi-professional picture taking setup and now are you guys ready for the sneak peek of the shop update I'm so excited so here are some of the colorways I have. I have a staple returning, Nebula. It's a little bit different than the original. I'm still working on the formula, but this one is still gorgeous nonetheless. Then I'm really excited for these next two. I'm calling this one Melted Lush because it just reminds me of like a melted pastel makeup look or something. It's so gorgeous. This one I almost had to keep for myself. It was really hard. And now, Neutrals Anyone is the name of this one. I absolutely love neutral yarn, neutral fiber, anything neutral. It's all my favorite. It goes so well with any color. You can mix it with anything. It is amazing. And I just want to say, I also dyed up a bunch of Gouda fiber and a bunch of Mulberry and Tussa Silk. I'm going to be blending and making some hand combed top and that will hopefully be listed next week. Thank you guys so much for watching and I hope you have a wonderful weekend. Y'all stay safe. Bye-bye.